The use of biological agents is real. Prepare yourself for survival by being proficient in the tasks identified in this video and know what to do to protect yourself against these potentially deadly biological agents. This is video one in a two-part series. <laughs> biological agents and effects. Biological agents are microorganisms that can cause disease among personnel, animals, or plants. They can cause the deterioration of materials and these agents fall into two broad categories. Pathogens, usually called germs and toxins. Pathogens are living microorganisms that cause lethal or incapacitating diseases. Bacteria and viruses are included in the pathogens. Toxins are poisons that plants, animals, or microorganisms produce naturally. Possible biological warfare toxins include a variety of neurotoxic, affecting the central nervous system, and cytotoxic, compounds that can cause death. Germs. Germs are living organisms. Some nations have used them in the past as weapons. Only a few germs can start an infection especially if inhaled into the lungs. Because germs are so small and weigh so little, the wind can spread them over great distances. They can also enter unfiltered or non-airtight places. Buildings and bunkers can trap them, thus causing a higher concentration. Germs do not affect the body immediately. They must first multiply inside the body and overcome the body's defenses, a process called the incubation period. Incubation periods vary from several hours to several months, depending on the germ. Most germs live within another living organism, the host, such as your body, to survive and grow. Weather conditions such as rain, wind, cold, and sunlight rapidly kill germs. Some germs can form protective shells or spores to allow survival outside the host. Spore producing agents are a long term hazard you must neutralize by decontaminating infected areas or personnel. Fortunately, most live agents are not spore producing. These agents must find a host within roughly a day of their delivery or they die. Germs have three basic routes of entry into your body through the respiratory tract, through a break in the skin, and through the digestive tract. Symptoms of infection vary according to the disease. Toxins. Toxins are substances that plants, animals, or germs produce naturally. These toxins are what actually harm man, not bacteria. Botulin, which produces botulism, is an example. Modern science has allowed large-scale production of these toxins without the use of the germ that produces the toxin. Toxins may produce effects similar to those of chemical agents. Toxic victims may not, however, respond to first aid measures used against chemical agents. Toxins enter the body in the same manner as germs. However, some toxins, unlike germs, can penetrate unbroken skin. Symptoms appear almost immediately since there is no incubation period. Many toxins are extremely lethal, even in very small doses. Symptoms may include any of the following. Dizziness mental confusion, blurred or double vision, numbness or tingling of skin, paralysis, convulsions, rashes or blisters, coughing, fever, aching muscles, tiredness, nausea, vomiting and or diarrhea, bleeding from body openings, blood in urine, stool or saliva, shock and even eventually death. Detection of biological agents. Biological agents are, by nature, very difficult to detect. You cannot detect them by any of the five physical senses. Often the first sign of biological agents will be the symptoms of the victims exposed to the agent. Your best chance of detecting biological agents before they can affect you is to recognize their means of delivery. The three main means of delivery are as follows. Bursting type munitions. These may be bombs or projectiles whose burst causes very little damage. The burst itself will produce a small cloud of liquid or powder in the immediate impact area. The cloud will disperse eventually. The rate of dispersion depends on the terrain and weather conditions. 
spray tanks or generators, aircraft or vehicle spray tanks or ground level aerosol generators produce an aerosol cloud of biological agents. Vectors. Insects such as mosquitoes, fleas, lice and ticks deliver pathogens. Large infestation of these insects indicate the use of biological agents. Another sign of a possible biological attack is the presence of unusual substances on the ground or on vegetation, or slick looking plants, crops or animals. High wind speeds increase the dispersion of biological agents, dilute their concentration and dehydrate them. The further downwind the agent travels, the less effective it becomes due to dilution and death of the pathogen. However, the downwind hazard area of the biological agent is significant and you cannot ignore it. Precipitation in the form of moderate to heavy rain tends to wash biological agents out of the air, reducing downwind hazards. However, the agents still may be very effective where they are deposited on the ground. Protection against biological agents. While you must maintain a healthy respect for biological agents, there is no reason for you to panic. You can reduce your susceptibility to biological agents by maintaining current immunizations, avoiding contaminated areas, and controlling rodents and pests. You must also use proper first aid measures in the treatment of wounds and only safe and properly decontaminated sources of food and water. You must ensure that you get enough sleep to prevent a rundown condition. You must always use proper field sanitation procedures. Assuming that you do not have a protective mask, always try to keep your face covered with some type of cloth to protect yourself against biological agent aerosols. Dust may contain biological agents. Wear some type of mask when dust is in the air. Your clothing and gloves will protect you against bites from vectors, mosquitoes and ticks that carry diseases. Completely button your clothing and tuck your trousers tightly into your boots. Wear a chemical protective garment if available as it provides better protection than normal clothing. Covering your skin will also reduce the chance of the agent entering your body through cuts and scratches. Always practice high standards of personal hygiene and sanitation to help prevent the spread of vectors. Wash your clothing in hot soapy water if you can. If you cannot wash your clothing, lay it out in an area of bright sunlight and allow the light to kill the microorganisms. After a toxin attack, decontaminate yourself as if for a chemical attack using a decontamination kit, if available, or by washing with soap and water. The next part of this series, part two, will be introducing chemical environments. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Prepper Action, and when you get a chance, check out my Amazon Survival Store. The link is in the description of this video.